The sports fraternity has been hit with the sad demise of legendary Ghanaian coach, footballer and administrator Jones Cecil Atukwefio at the Kolibu Teaching Hospital in Accra this morning. Sir Atukwefio, as he is affectionately called, coached the Black Stars starlets to the FIFA Under-17 World Cup bronze medal in 1999 New Zealand and was also the assistant coach for the Black Meteors team that won Africa's first Olympic football medal in Barcelona in 1992 with bronze. He also made great strides with the senior national team, the Black Stars. So how do we remember the legacy of this great Ghanaian sports personality and how important is this legacy to sports development in Ghana? This is today's Big Story with me, Stephen N.T. Now, Sir Cecil Jones, uh, born in 18th October 1944, and he died in the early hours of May 12, 2015, at Kolibu Teaching Hospital after a long bout with throat cancer. He played many times for the Ghana national team, the Black Stars, and helped the team win the 1965 African Cup of Nations. On the international front, he managed the Benin national team to the 2004 African Cup of Nations and a crowd house of Oak to the 2000 African Champions League title. He managed the Black Stars in 2008 and 2009 and coached Liberty Professionals FC. Cecil Jones at Tukwe was named African Coach of the Year in 2000 after his club Bakra has of Oak won the African Champions League with only one loss throughout the entire tournament. They lost to DC Motema Pembe, and a great man indeed is gone. Let's first hear from his family. Johnny spoke to his son. <laughs> He's paid his dues very, very well. And early, early wee morning, the good Lord invited him to have breakfast at his bosom. So that's the news, and that's it. He's, he's been battling for eight to 10 years now. So if today he's no more, I don't think you want to see the successful that you see on the touch lines, throwing his hands, trying to instruct what has to be done on the field, correcting players and encouraging them on, urging them on to win a match. I don't, I don't think you'd like to see him in a wheelchair calling you to come and turn him left, right, every three minutes or every four minutes or every five minutes. So if it's happened this way, I think you should give us the support that we need to give him a befitting barrier. And I'm sure he'll be very, very happy. His few last words, never cry and keep smiling and always know that he's with us right uh, we also spoke to his wife uh, Sophia let's listen past eight years we've been battling with throat cancer and I know my Lord will do it so even yesterday at the bedside I was looking at him my husband could not talk he was just lying down motionless and I told the nurses to straighten him up. They did it. I saw that even though he was suffering, I still have faith and hope that I'll bring him home. So I went and asked the doctor, when will you discharge us? He said, oh, after we've taken off the stitches, you'll go home. Because as Cecil said, he's been treated like a prisoner. He didn't like the way he's been left alone. So I had faith and hope that I'll come home with my husband. Little did I know when I got to the hospital at dawn this morning, I was told he's passed off around 2 to 30. Right, uh, we do have in the studio now Joy Sports' Nathaniel Atto, citizen Atto. Sir Toto, how are you, sir? Ah, great to have you. So great Cecil, uh, Cecil is, is, is gone. He's being a great uh, personality in the sports development of this country. What's the, what's the, I don't know, the fondest memory, either professionally or personally, that you could recall of this man? Well, two things. Um, I mean, that, that performance by the Black Stars, 
that had a core of Accra Hartsville players. I think that Sir Cecil Jones at Tukwe View sent a clear message to all of us hmm. that look, and this was in an era where local coaches were, were coaching the Black Stars without contracts. They were just going in there and they were being mm. pushed out anyhow and they were not getting their due respect from our foreign based players now now this is a man who said to himself you know something we're not going to work with these players who have big egos and all of that and we're going to prove to them that we can do it without them without and, them. and he sent a clear message over there it just showed you that this man was a great disciplinarian and for me those are one of the, the, the very key principles that he, uh, you know, he exhibited mm. during uh, his very active career as a coach. Also, um, the fact that at the time when he wanted to take a back seat, he was asked to come back and, you know, he was asked to come back and take over the reins of Accra Hearts of Oak again. And they ensured, he ensured that the club won the maiden edition of the CAF Confederation Cup. I mean, for me, I mean, these are achievements that are etched in, you know, the books of history forever. In okay. gold, actually. Exactly, exactly. Mm. Yeah. Platinum, actually. And, and so, so uh, his absence from the sports scene now, does it leave any vacuum in terms of sports development and sports administration, the roles he played? Definitely. I mean, this is a man who worked at the level of the FA. He, he worked as a club administrator as well, worked as a coach. He's played the game before. So all of these credentials put together. And, and, and mind you, he's also done a lot of uh, uh, courses in Europe and in mm. South America, specifically Brazil and the like. So this is someone who has, who's a tower of knowledge when it comes to football. And um, in an era like this where uh, all over the world, uh, the, the, the focus is on developing from the grassroots. These are the kinds of people you need. I mean, when you go on Facebook, today I was, I was just observing some of, the, um, some of the comments that had come on social media. It was so sad. I mean, Michael Essien was on Instagram and he said, uh, rest in peace, this is my under-17 coach. And he stated clearly that Coach Cecil Jones Atukwefio was the one who gave him some of the basics in football. Remember that mm. Cecil Jones Atukwefio is a founding director of Liberty uh, Professionals Football mm. Club. And Liberty Professionals is known for pro pro producing some of the great players uh, who uh, went to the World Cup in 2006. Michael Essien, Sule Ali, Montari, Asamoah. And who have like, gone on to, these, to have great international great careers. Great international careers. And all of these players passed through the hands of Cecil Jones that took away few, uh, you know, at the under-17 level, uh, at Liberty Professionals and all of that. And at Liberty for Professionals, the, 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 the core identity of the club is scientific soccer. And also scientific I read, uh, you know, another, another you know, uh, message on Facebook um, by Coach uh, David Duncan, Kotoko's uh, head coach, uh, David Duncan. And he was also attesting to, uh, you know, Cecil Jones that took away few's depth when it came to knowing the rudiments of the game and knowing the little fine details of what exactly scientific soccer was. You know, in football, there are so many things. I mean, it's one thing, uh, you know, just going on and on about the definitions and all of that. And it's another thing transferring it from one generation to the other or transferring it from your brain to the football team or to the respective players whom you want to, you know, uh, play in a certain formation mm -hmm. or something like that. So for me, um, we've lost a very great tower of knowledge, especially uh, at this time when we're focusing on developing the grassroots. People are setting up academies and all of that. I mean, I always said that. I mean, uh, we, we really miss Cecil Jones. I took a few, especially during the periods when we're going for the Africa Cup of Nations and for the World Cup, because Joy Sports programming across mm. board mm. on television, on radio, and online uh, required solid people like him. Mm. And you know, in other parts of the world, uh, you know, this man will be celebrated a great deal. And I think but that you, we haven't you, done bad as a nation Do you so think far. that we were able to benefit from his immense talent as a country, that we, we made it possible for the whole nation to benefit from him? Definitely, much? definitely we did. Uh, what many of you do not know is that our stellar performance at the 2006 FIFA World Cup, okay, a lot of what we achieved there can be attributed to the solid groundwork, the thorough groundwork that Cecil Jones took away field did together with uh, Samade mm -hmm. and uh, Robert Saki uh, for, for that tournament. Now, our victory against the Czech Republic, who were then the number five best team in, in the, the world. world. I mm -hmm. think they were number three then. You know, th that, 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 that job that was executed 
came as a result of the thorough job that Cecil Jones took a few did. So this is somebody who was a thorough person. He was methodical in his movement, and and it is clear from from what we saw on the football pitch, and it's clear from the kind of material that passed through his hands as well. Right, uh, Nathaniel, I'll have you hold briefly. Uh, Sani Dara is the Director of Communications for the GFA. He's joining us. Uh, Sani Dara, good evening, and thanks for joining us on today's Big Story. Thank you very much, and good evening. Good evening. Now, the GFA statement describes uh, Cecil Jones, uh, Jones as inspirational leader whose contribution to Ghana football was justly recognized during his lifetime and will continue to live in our memories. Would you say he was celebrated enough by the GFA and by Ghanaians in general? Well, um, we can always say that never enough. Mm. Given um, the litany of achievements he had throughout his career, both um, as a player, as a coach, and as an administrator, um, he would have wanted a situation where he would have been celebrated every day. Mm. But the mere recognition that he was the best coach in Africa for 2000, the, the testimonial game that was organized in his honor, and lots of things we did behind the scenes without mentioning it in public also uh, to support in various ways uh, would say that we celebrated him but mm. would say that it's never enough given the, the things he's done uh, in his career. Mm. Now, sports development has been a major uh, discussion every day that sports journalists talk about the need to develop the sports, football and other social... Other, uh, related uh, uh, sports activities. Uh, with the role Sir Cecil Jones played in football development, would you say there was a legacy he left behind? And how would you say this legacy should be enhanced or improved years after his demise? Well, I can say that um, he's an inspiration to our current crop of exciting players. Mm -hmm. You might have heard what Asamwajan, the captain of the Black Stars, wrote about him. Um, also, uh, some former footballers who worked with him and observed him are also taken in his footsteps as coaches, and we hope that they can reach the heights that they were able to win. But those things are hard. I think that one abiding legacy that Jones will leave not only for coaches in this country, but for administrators and for football followers, is his quality and character as a human being. One who, when he thoroughly believes in something, carries them through, regardless of their criticism, mm. regardless of their double opinion, or a sense. A lot of the times we find that there are coaches who coach. But um, when they are faced with a little challenge, a little criticism, or even a suggestion, they buckle under pressure. Jones was not one of those. And I think that this um, straightforwardness in the way he dealt with authority, in the way he dealt with people he worked with, his subordinates, and then his contemporaries, is something that would abide by anybody who came across him. Those who say that uh, sports personalities of the stature of Sir Cecil Jones at Tukwefio needed to have been recognized more and needed to also have been given sufficient support through the periods that they were, were ill. I mean, Sir Cecil Jones had throat cancer, which he battled with for several years. His family say he lived with a condition for close to 10 years. Uh, did you at any point as GFA thought about uh, supporting him through uh, his medical expenses, caring for him one way or the other, apart from just uh, celebrating him through word of mouth? Well, um, I, I can say as a statement of fact that uh, most of our executives uh, who would not like to be named privately did a lot to support him in difficult times. Mm. And uh, you would also realize that um, a match that was organized in his honor, uh, you know, didn't go the way we expected mm. it. So, That's right. Um, you know, was also done 
to, to help raise some funds. That shows that we, we have done something in support. But mm -hmm. I would also insist that all of these things uh, are not enough. Are not enough, uh, exactly. Are not enough, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, we would have wanted a situation where uh, finance committee would have done more. More. And so then, so the lessons, the lessons, the lessons, Sunny. The lessons, Sunny. We are learning from there is that are you committing to do better for uh, current sports personalities who are alive? We don't want them to die before we come celebrating them with word of mouth. Can you make us that commitment? Yes, we can definitely make that commitment. And uh, even about five days ago, we had a meeting about uh, some insurance policy mm. for for our players talking about the pension scheme too as well. These are things we've committed to. We are putting right. the final documents in place. We've got a bank to support it, and hopefully these things will come to fruition. Right. But I uh, would also want to say that uh, that apart in the past, uh, when footballers played or served the country in some ways, they also had second jobs with the country. Mm. In the armed forces, in the in the peace service, service, or wherever it is, right. so that when they retired from their playing or active, you know, endeavors in sport, they could rest from the state by serving in another capacity where right. they could lose on. Mm. If so, these things could be revived, it could go also go a long way in supporting what we are planning to do. Right, Sunny Dara, thanks very much. Uh, but I want to hear from you before you go, whether the GFA has any plans to uh, set up a memorial of a kind in honor of Sir Jones. Uh, we want to do a lot of things uh, to remember him, one. Um, we, we also want to do this thing together with, their family, with his mm. family. And also, we need to inform government about this. Is somebody who's won the Order of the Volta Award in this country, and if he passes away, given the achievements is done, we also need to involve to government. Mm. And we'll see what we'll be able to put together. But for sure, the GFA will play a leading role in this. Right, uh, Sanidara, we're grateful for your time on today's big story. We'll talk to you again, and we're happy that you could join. Uh, Nathaniel, you, you had, uh, you had yeah, some, and, and, something and you I wanted to say about... In, mm. in wanting to correct the ills of, of yesteryear, I think that it's also right that we put all of the issues in perspective and acknowledge what has been which, done so Which far. issues would this be? I'm glad that, uh, you know, Ibrahim Sanidara mentioned mm. that uh, you know, Sir Cecil Jones had been awarded one of the highest honors of the land, which yeah. was the Order of the Volta. Volta. And I remember this happened uh, in the year 2008 when uh, ex-president Kufo, uh, you know, put that together for the very last time and in, our, in it, our history. Did it come with financial benefits? Well, not the financial benefit. I'm, I'm looking at the, the symbolism of the award. For me, that, that matters more than a million dollars or three million dollars, care? you know, care for him when let's, he was yeah, he and then I'm, I'm coming terminal. to that as well. Now let's let's also not one thing that Sir did not did not like was was for anybody to make him look like um like he was uh, at the benevolence like, of yes, society and, and that he looked and begging to be giving egg, exactly he he was very he comfortable mm. he was a very comfortable man relatively compared to some of his other That's you know right. teammates I think we need to establish that now. Mm. Um, one of the others, I remember very well that a former goalkeeper of the Black Stars who passed through his hands, mm -hmm. you know, came out openly right, saying... Nathaniel, I'll hold you on. Yeah. Uh, Jay Sapon, who is the head coach of Ebusian Dwarf, is joining us before we lose him. Uh, I'm sure we lost him. Uh, yeah. Jay Sapon is head coach of Ebusian Dwarf. We'll try and get him back on the line uh, I'm, to share I'm, some yeah. thoughts with us about Sir Jones. Uh, I'm glad I'm glad that we're reaching uh, Jay Sapon because Jay Sapon worked under Sir Cecil Jones mm -hmm. uh, during his la latter days at Liberty Professionals. Right. Remember, Jay Sapon used to be um, a coach at Liberty Professionals and he I almost every other day in the last days that I went to visit Jones that I went there to see him I either met uh, you know Jay Sapon on my way out or I met him there and we sat down and had a chat so that, that, and, and that, his reason was that very simple that he wanted to continue to to squeeze out every possible bit of knowledge on the game that he could from, from Jones. So Jay Sapong, I'm sure, will be very, very distraught at mm -hmm. this time because he saw him as a father figure, and he was a father figure to, to, to many of us. One other thing that many of us did not know was that he monitored current affairs a lot, from current affairs through to sports, through to football proper, which was his area of, that of, was of, Cecil of specialty. Cecil Jones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I would like to also remember the very final communication that I had with him, which was a text message uh, 
uh, asking me to join him to celebrate his 70th birthday. This was on October 18. And mm -hmm. sometimes when I, I, I mean, this morning when I was reflecting, I, I, I felt very, very sad. Uh, this surely is a very, very sad day indeed. May he so rest in peace. Uh, a great man. We've lost. Uh, we're still trying to get uh, J.E. Sapong, head coach of Abusia Draft, on the telephone line so that we can have some chat with him. We're getting also the sports minister, Dr. Mustafa Ahmed, uh, who also has some fond memories to share with us. We'll be bringing all of that as we continue our discussion on today's Big Story. We'll take a short break and uh, we'll be right back with more. Right, welcome back. Uh, we, we have on the line now Dr. Mustafa Ahmed, who is a sports minister. Good evening, sir, and thanks for all your time. Good evening. It's, it's a sad day, really, but yet we are celebrating the legacy of a man who played such an important role in the uh, development of football in this country. Your, what's your fondest memory of Sir Cecil Jones at Okwefio? Well, um... I think we all remember, you know, a lot of uh, passion uh, how he coached the Black Stars, the skill, the seriousness that he had tied to work, and then the sort of confidence that he exuded while he was at the job, mm. uh, giving everybody a lot of hope. I think you will remember for all the uh, effort that he put in raising uh, very high hope and to see that he did his work with a lot of professionality. Mm. You know, if you were supporting the Black Stars when he was coming, you always felt that look, there was so much hope uh, that the coach, uh, the way he was directing uh, his gesticulation on the, on the, on the sidelines. So uh, you get a lot of confidence, and I think uh, we will uh, remember him uh, for, for mm -hmm. So, Doc, I, I need to find out from you what the ministry is is planning to do uh, to honor him. Early days, yes, but then we have uh, uh, first and foremost tried to do the first, uh, try to uh, reach out to the, uh, the family commentate to them, reach out to some of his friends who are known in the ministry and then the, uh, the sports authority. So, you know, I have to emphasize to them. And, and indeed, the, the general Ghanaian people love them, uh, the big love to the whole nation. So, uh, these are them. They're also six steps to formally uh, send the message the presidency about the, uh, the laws right. that are accomplished. And to see if we can uh, have permission of both government and the family to participate in uh, according to the education Right. Now, there have been those who, there have been those who say that uh, Sarah Cecil Jones at Tukwefio has a wealth of memoirs uh, through his work, videos and materials which could be of immense benefit to uh, young footballers uh, who are developing to full-blown professionals. Is there any plan from the ministry to archive some of these materials uh, for future use? Well, we, it, it, it's part of the grand plan of the ministry mm. uh, put in place. Uh, mechanism like a uh, hall of fame and so on. So once it's materialized, it will be a place where we can have all such materials about our skills, our right. great men and women in sports, so that it will serve uh, as an inspiration to the younger one. 
Right. Right, Dr. Mustafa Akhmed, we're grateful for your time on today's big story. So, Nathaniel, you uh, you say that government didn't exactly abandon him. Let me also remind you. Mis, uh, mis, yeah. mis, misrepresentation. Yeah. To let me let me also remind you of the the last uh, you know the uh, the dinner that was held in honor of the Black Stars mm -hmm. ahead of traveling to Brazil for the last uh, World Cup, where President John Dramani Mahama announced a 1.8 million Ghana CD package to be given to all. Uh, past players who had won the Africa Cup of Nations. Uh, Cesar so Jones is one of them, and okay. I'm very sure that uh, that money, because that money has been disbursed to all of those who, uh, you know, were part of the winning teams that, that got us our four African African titles. Right. So, um, in that regard, I think that it is it is safe. The, the earlier point I was raising was that Cesar so Jones at Tukwefio didn't want anybody to place him within the category of, of a charity case. Mm -hmm. He was very, very comfortable. Um, it, it wasn't to say that if anybody wanted to extend any any present or anything to him, he would he would refuse it. But he was a very comfortable person, and um, uh, well, he had the surgeries here. Uh, the best, some of the best uh, uh, surgeons at, at Kolibu helped him. But you know, uh, we we are human beings, we're and, human, and, and sometimes and, and, we and some, sometimes disease can 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 take the better the better part, yeah, the better part of us. So I, I know uh, rather unfortunate. I remember very well that uh, one former goalkeeper of the Black Stars, uh, mm. goalkeeper Amamu granted an interview yeah. publicly to say that he wanted to to fly uh, Jones but he turned outside. it down he turned it down it, uh, it was not too Nathaniel, I beg your pardon I have to go thanks very sure. much for joining citizen uh, citizen Atto is uh, with the joy sports my name is Stephen Etienne. and thanks for joining us on today's big story we'll be right back with the interactive segment do stay